Hello, my name is Elle. Um, today I wanted to make a video about how I have been detransitioning for almost four years. Um, we're like pretty much, I mean we're less than a month out from the four year mark, so I'll just say it's been four years. <laughs> um, and I kind of just wanted to walk through what my life has been like since my detransition started. So I guess this is a a detransition timeline video. Um, so my detransition started um, and I feel like for the first year, so like year one, my focus was every day on my voice, my facial hair, my receding hairline, and being perceived as a guy in public. Um, and that was my focus, and it was pretty much daily. Um, and I would pretty much wake up in the morning every morning and cry and think that I ruined my voice. Um, how could I ever be seen as a girl again? Um, for the rest of my life, I'm going to sound like this and I'm going to be an old lady and I'm going to sound like a man and I don't know how to deal with that. Um, and so I would just cry and I also was getting high a lot. Um, smoked a lot of weed and tried to cope with those feelings um, and I went through a lot of different kind of like identity crises during that time uh, like I went through a, a phase of being like a radical feminist I went through a phase of thinking like maybe I'm agender or um, like non-binary or gender fluid or whatever um I went through a phase uh related to that where I used like they them pronouns um and then a big part of the kind of transition from being on testosterone to going back to estrogen for me was um as soon as I got my first period back, which was after like a few months, um, I shaved my beard, I shaved most of my body, I started wearing sports bras, and started trying to dress a little more feminine. Um, and that was the point when I started to feel like, what am I? Like, I thought I was a man for so long I lived as a man, I grew into an adult as a man, and I don't know what I am now. Um, and that was a really hard thing because the question never really got answered for me. I feel like I'm, I feel like that's still been something that I've struggled with ever since then. Um, and and I just remember the feeling like seeing my shaved face after I'd had a beard for so long. And I thought like, I'm kind of gonna miss the beard. I liked having a beard. Um, and that was kind of the last time that I felt like I didn't have to worry about what people thought of me in public. Um, and that has haunted me for the past four years. I mean, it really has. <laughs> Um, it, it's like the reverse of before I came out as trans. Um, so that's definitely something that I need to like warn any potential transitioners about is that you might feel like it's a solution to the problem that you're having where you don't you know, you just worry about what people see and you worry about what people will call you in public. Um, 
But if you ever regret that decision, there really is no going back from that. And especially if you're a kid, that's something that I really need to reiterate, is that it's not possible to just go back. Um, I solved my problem temporarily for a few years uh, with testosterone and passing as a guy, and I didn't have to worry about what people thought of me in public because I was a man and people saw a man. And, and I, and I, and that, that during that time, I just got to forget about trans stuff because I was a man and there was no reason for me to think about it as much anymore. Um, and then as soon as I shaved that beard and put on a sports bra and realized that my body had changed so much, um, and that my appearance no longer reflected who I was. Um, I've never, that feeling is gonna follow you for forever, probably. Um, and okay, so that's year one. <laughs> um, year one, a lot of those year one problems have followed for the rest of the years. But every year has had, I think, different things that I haven't talked about as much. So year two of detransitioning, so this is 2020 to 2021. I'm just going to say summer of 2020 to summer of 2021. So um, pretty much exactly a year from when I decided to detransition, I got a boyfriend. And this is actually like my first boyfriend ever, um, which is crazy to say <laughs> and to think about. But I had only dated girls um, and I'd also never had sex with anyone before I was trans or since detransitioning. So I'd never had sex like as a girl or as a woman. Um, and that's really weird. So there was definitely a lot of like figuring out how to navigate a relationship while also still going through a detransition and discovering all these new things about myself, about how I am in a relationship, about my body, about his body, <laughs> not to be too graphic, but you know, I thought I was a man. And then when I was actually in bed with a man, I was like, yeah, I can't live up to that. <laughs> I couldn't live up to that. Um, but yeah, like I remember, you know, going on our first date, I was so fucking scared because I was like, what if I get there? And he says, hi, and introduces himself. And I open my mouth and I say, hi. And he instantly just goes like, like what would, that's just, and that, and the thing about that fear is that it's, it's real because it happens. It's happened to me. Um, and that's, that's a very real thing. That doesn't go away. Um, and so I had to grapple with that. Um, and I got really fortunate that my first date since, um, since detransitioning, I mean, I had a couple of other, like, Tinder dates that just were awkward for other reasons. But my first, like, real date that I had been, like, set up with, um, with him, um, it went really well. And it was really nice. Um, and I felt really good. And 
and then we had a second date and that went really well and I felt really good and then we had a third date and that went really well and it was just really nice. Um, and I didn't have to explain anything to him. I didn't feel like he, he wasn't treating me any differently. Um, I didn't feel like a freak around him and I had just, and when I'm alone, I just feel like a freak. Um, and that whole year I spent, you know, my first whole year of detransitioning, I just felt like I was different from everyone. My friends didn't understand. Nobody understood. I felt like a freak. I felt like I wasn't like able to really be myself or like express who I really was. Um, and and it made it me feel like it was it was going to be much harder for people to get to know me as a person because of this this barrier um in my voice and in my appearance that I had especially back then um that just I felt like just kind of prevented me from wanting to connect with anyone um so I felt really, really fortunate that those dates went so well and and he didn't ask me any questions about it. He didn't act like it was, he didn't act like, you know, I, he needed an explanation for the way that I was. He never made me feel like I was weird <laughs> or, you know, any, he never mentioned it. He never brought it up. He never said anything about it. And I was kind of just like surprised because I figured you know, everybody noticed it. I feel I figured like it was this big, obvious thing um, that everybody needs to point out at some point and and ask me why I am the way that I am. Um, and he never did that. And I finally, after after we started dating, I brought it up maybe a few weeks, uh, a few weeks later, and and he told me that he already knew. Um, because he was, we, our date was set up by a mutual friend and my mutual friend knew, um, because we were friends while I was trans and he told me, um, our mutual friend told me that he showed my boyfriend one of my YouTube videos <laughs> and my boyfriend said that, like, he was like, whoa, like, she used to be trans and now like she's a girl again like damn she really looked like a guy but like she looks good now <laughs> and he said he didn't really think that much about it and then when we went on a date he he just kind of knew the backstory but he didn't know or care like why that happened or what happened or he didn't feel the need for me to explain it at all like he just he was like okay you know and I really needed that. Um, and I needed it so much that I basically clung on to him. And from, from, you know, from when we started dating to, well, I'll just, I'll just go into like year two of, of the detransition, um, 2020 to 2021. A lot of this time was just spent with him clinging on to him for support, needing him um, all the time. And kind of, you know, at this point I stopped making videos. I stopped reaching out to a lot of people. I lost a lot of friends. Um, and it wasn't his fault. Um, it wasn't you know, an abusive relationship. Um, it was just the fact that I was extremely codependent on him and I needed him for emotional support 24 seven. Um, and that's really hard to, you know, acknowledge because we are still in a relationship um and it's been complicated 
Um, and I don't want to like harp on it too much, but it really has affected a lot of, you know, the past few years of my life. And, and I've spent a lot of time in the past, you know, you know, three years, um, working on codependency and trying to be emotionally, uh, in charge of myself and, and, and relying on myself for emotional regulation. And it's really hard. And, uh, so years two and three were basically just spent relying on my boyfriend for, for all of my emotional support needs and not having many other people in my life. But it's because like that, that feeling at the beginning was so intoxicating, just feeling like he understood me and he didn't expect anything from me and he loved me and that's all I needed. I just needed that unconditional emotional support because I hated myself so much and and I felt like there was nothing I could do to make it better. And so I spent two years completely relying on him for emotional support. Um, and uh, I guess it was only like, well, a year and a half where I didn't acknowledge that I had an issue at all. Um, and then, so uh, that was two years into my detransition when I finally decided that I needed to get mental health support because I had a, an issue um, with relying on this single one person to take care of all of my needs instead of taking care of them myself and doing what I needed to do for my own well-being um, because I felt powerless, I felt helpless. Um, I just felt like I couldn't be my own emotional support. And then finally in, you know, two years into my detransition, um, I guess, oh my gosh, I guess it was three years in because we started dating in 2020. I was thinking that was when I detransitioned, but that was not when I detransitioned. So it was three years in to my detransition. Um, damn, that's crazy. <laughs> okay. Um, so three years into my detransition, I finally decided that the cure was not for me to get a boyfriend. The cure was for me to get therapy and acknowledge my mental health issues. And it's crazy because, you know, it took two years of being in a relationship, in a codependent relationship, to realize that it wasn't fixing my problems and it wasn't ultimately making me feel better about myself because I didn't take care of many of my other emotional needs um and you know it's hard i think it was it was my first real adult relationship and i feel like they're just really hard to figure out and it was his first relationship ever um and relationships are just hard especially when you come from a family that does not have healthy relationships um, or has ever modeled what a healthy relationship is. Um, so three years in, year three of my detransition, um, I was still, you know, worried about my voice, still fixated on my appearance quite a lot, and ultimately decided that that was not the main issue um, 
contrary to my belief system for a long time. Um, and I decided to get mental health support. And so I started going to therapy and I really had an amazing time with my therapist. She was amazing. Um, she helped me out a lot with diagnosing me and acknowledging my issues. And she helped me work through a lot of stuff for the first time that I really needed to work through. And she kind of helped me set the tone for feeling comfortable in front of therapists again, because before her, I had seen quite a few bad therapists, including the ones who ultimately ended up, you know, enabling my gender transition. So I had a hard time with therapy, but she really, um, she really made me feel comfortable laying on the couch in front of a therapist and opening up. Um, and, uh, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, and when I started working on my mental health issues, it gave me something else to focus on, uh, other than my relationship, other than my physical appearance, and other than my detransition. So I really, you know, I put it on the back burner a little bit, but it's kind of just become a constant, even up until now, into year four. Um, it's just a constant little voice in the back of my head that goes, your voice is deep. Your voice is, is too deep. And people are going to look at you, and people are going to wonder why. People are going to think it and not say anything. Um, people are wondering why you sound like that. Um, and every time your voice goes down into that, like, rumbly, rumbly way it does, um, they're gonna think that something is wrong with you, that you are lying to everyone about being a woman, that you're just, you know putting on a show and um, that you'll never be able to relate to real women and that you just, it's just going to be like fake. Like it's just going to be, it's, it's like everyone is putting on a show around me to make me feel normal and comfortable without acknowledging the fact that I sound like a man is basically where my thought process goes. So I kind of constantly feel like um, everyone is secretly thinking that I am a freak and that I don't belong and that I you know, I'm just putting on the performance of being a woman because I'm not really a woman, but I want everyone to think that I'm a woman. Um, and, and it's all theatrical and it's all just, um, just, uh, a performance. And, and I really do wonder I mean, that's all in my head. And it kind of all happens at once. But it happens every time I go somewhere and talk to someone. And that gets really fucking exhausting. <laughs> you know, it gets really, really exhausting. <laughs> and I just wonder if it's true. And I guess I just never know. Um... There have been times in my life where I've had it confirmed because people will ask me if I'm trans. People will ask me my pronouns when I say something because they instantly think that I need them to know that I have pronouns. Um, people look at me weird when I speak. Um, people comment on my voice. 
and and I just I just don't I, I that just it's never that's good that doesn't go away it just doesn't go away it's been four years and it still happens every day in my head and I don't cry about it anymore really I mean I kind of started to just now but I don't wake up in the morning and cry as often maybe it happens a couple times a year maybe every few months it's not as bad as it used to be but it's never gone away And I guess the the reason I'm making this video is because, you know, I've wanted to send a message about how everything gets better and, and, you know, all of these good things can happen to you in life and you'll be fine. Um, and not everything has to be about transitioning and detransitioning and gender stuff and you know, your whole life doesn't have to be Twitter and ranting about the next, you know, shitty thing that happened related to, you know, gender health care or passing bills and, you know, men trying to breastfeed and another 12-year-old having a mastectomy. Um, you know, it's just, there's only so much you can do without wanting to kill yourself so you just you really kind of have to tread lightly i mean as a detransitioner i think there should just come a point when you stop engaging and i've come through that you know point on and off you know multiple times i've gone off of twitter i've gone off of youtube i've completely disengaged from the detrans community before and it does help to you know not constantly bo be bombarded by like news articles and people um being so negative and criticizing and all of the reactions to new detransitioners that always inevitably come out with the same stuff like uh you sound like a man like you'll always be a man and you can't run away from your gender and people are saying that to a female detransitioner and don't know what the fuck they're talking about um it's really hard to just have that be your life constantly um and it, and it, it doesn't go away unless you move away from it, I guess. And that's the hard part is a lot of the time you can't. Um, but if you can, I recommend that you do because it's it doesn't get better when you're stuck. Um, and I don't know. I don't really know. If there's a, a foolproof way to get unstuck, I've gone through, I've gone through so much mental anguish in the past few years, um, not just related to trans issues, related to a lot of different things, but honestly, I could say some of the direct effects of transitioning and detransitioning are suicidality, severe depression, severe anxiety, um, lack of sense of self, lack of self-worth, lacking social connections, um, finding it hard to meet people, finding it hard to go outside finding it hard to find a job or hold down a job or interact with coworkers or interact with anyone. <laughs> um, drugs are a big one, drug addiction, drug abuse. Um, that's been part of my life. Um, and struggling with reasons to keep going 
um, it's all very hard. And sometimes I just wonder what the point is when this is my life. Um, and I guess everybody has their own, you know, reasons to want to live. And everybody has their own reasons to not want to live. But this is definitely topping the list of reasons why I don't want to live. <laughs> and I don't think I'm the only one who can say that. But everybody likes a feel-good story. You know, everybody wants the happy ending. And you can't get a happy ending in life. It's just not how it works. It doesn't wrap up tight in a bow and it can't be presented to you as a linear happy story. Um, and if I never made a video again, I could leave this channel up and make everybody think that it's so easy and you know, you can struggle, but you'll persevere. Um, maybe you will, maybe you won't, you know, maybe it's just too fucking hard. And I mean, I, I'm not about to kill myself, but I've thought about it a lot. And, uh, I'm definitely not the only one and I'm just trying to be honest you know into year four the transitioning hasn't really gotten that much better I guess I don't cry every day so that's good um, but I feel like I'm even more depressed than I was back then and I guess I don't I think it's just the reality that I'll never get to be like a normal woman and I'll never get to feel what it's like to just go out in public and be a woman and feel like I'm normal and feel like everybody can see who I am and feel authentic. I don't feel authentic. I feel completely inauthentic. I feel like I'm putting on this facade and um, and it doesn't feel real, and I don't feel like I can really connect with people, um, and I, I don't know if that's just from detransitioning or from something else or from, like, you know, autism or just anxiety or depression, uh, or all of the above, BPD, bipolar, you know, something, probably one of those, multiple of those things apply to me in some way, but it's, you know, detransitioning is not the cure to mental illness. It's definitely far from it, and it's not easy, and it's not, it's, it doesn't end it never ends. Um, I think the only way it can really end is if you get to the point where it's not the biggest part of your life anymore and you don't really have to think about it. And that's where I want to be, but I don't know if I'll ever get there. So we'll see. Because as of like the past year, um, or so, or the past four years, maybe it's always been there. Um, I just feel like that will never go away. And I always feel like I have to run and I never can really let anybody in truly. Um, I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that ever again. So. Yeah, thanks for watching. Um, if, you know, if anyone out there can relate to this, you know, that would be awesome to hear that I'm not the only one. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to apologize for having such a depressing video because 
it's real. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. I, uh, I hope to see you in the next one.